Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna check out the two brand new checkers from Hanna Instruments to see whether they are hot or not. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And as touched on in the intro, I have both the brand new HANA checkers from HANA Instruments, including the much talked about magnesium checker, and to be fair, the much less talked about ammonia checker. We'll go through, have a look what's included in each of the kits, what the process is involved in the testing, and we'll have a look at the results I get to see whether they are useful or not for your application. Let's start off with the ammonia checker. We'll rip right into it right now. All right, here we are, the HANA Marine Ammonia Checker. It's got this beautiful yellow color and it's uh, littered with yellow tangs on the front. Let's rip the box open. You can see it's this new larger format of box that a lot of the checkers seem to be coming out with. We get the checker itself. We get a battery to put in it, which we'll put in in a second. We get a couple of uh, curvets or cuvettes. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but we'll go with that. We get a little, uh, Pipette, we get a reagent A, we get a reagent B, I think that is, reagent C, my apologies, and a handful of reagent Bs. And last but not least, we get some instructions, if I can get them out. You get both the uh, instruction booklet and the sort of quick, uh, not so quick to get out, but the uh, quick instructions from here. So uh, let's go about uh, getting this thing set up and doing a test. First of all, we're going to just pop open the bottom of the unit and put the battery in super quick. All right, we are now ready to perform a test. So I'm going to grab the uh, quick instruction sheet. And we'll have a look here. It says first we can do is press the button. We grab 10 milliliters of water to put into the cuvette. We put 18 drops of reagent A. We put a sachet of reagent B. We give it a shake until there's no bubbles. We then give it 30 seconds. We put it in the checker, probably let the bubbles dissipate. We press the button until it goes to C2. We add 12 drops of reagent C, tip the curve out over five times, pop it back in and hold the button down. We get a 15 minute counter and then our ammonia level is present. Now, obviously, if I'm gonna grab some water from my tank, I'm expecting there to be no ammonia there. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and pop one drop of uh, Dr. Tim's ammonium chloride in the uh, sample just to see if uh, we do indeed get a, a little ammonia reading, which we should. Um, I can probably work out this does have the uh, concentration on it, I believe, or someone out there will know what the concentration is. So we can work out what one or two drops is going to equate to. But effectively, I'm looking for any reagent, oh, sorry, effectively, I'm looking for any reading of ammonia by putting one or two drops of this in the sample. So um, let's go about getting some water. All right, now I probably should start with step one. I'm gonna turn the checker on, so I press the button and it should show us C1. Good, we can pop that aside. I've then got 10 milliliters of tank water, and then I'm about to pop the reagent A in, but just before I do, I'm gonna open this up and just grab one little drop of our ammonia chloride. There we go, that should give us something to result on. All right, I'm just gonna give that a little swirl in there just to, um, Sure, it's mixed in nice and evenly. Okay, now we've got to get uh, our reagent A and put 18 drops of it in, which is quite a lot, but let me just count through it as I add them in. All right, 18 drops of that. I will say that the uh, drops were nice and consistent at least, which is handy. And uh, we can go and pop uh, one sachet of reagent B in. Now I know they tell you to cut both sides, but um, I don't know, personally, it's a full sachet, I'll give you that. I get better results just taking the top off and then just tipping in like this. You create a little spout and uh, tip him in. All right, that's got all of that reagent done. Now we are to pop the lid on and give it a uh, invert. It says to make sure there's no bubbles, but um, we'll give it plenty of time or maybe no, yeah, okay. You can see you actually get some little bits little cloudy bits in there, the powder hasn't completely mixed in. So I think that's what it means by that. You gotta shake it until it's uh, completely gone. So I will do that, which does take a decent amount of mixing, I'll give you that. And I've given it a pretty vigorous shake and I've still got a couple of little uh, floaties in there. It seems to have mostly gone now, it's just some bubbles. So I'll give that the 30 seconds to dissipate those bubbles. I'll get our checker ready to do the next step. 
All right, it looks like that has now mixed in. So I'm gonna pop him back into our checker and I always like to line up the uh, markings just so I'm putting it in vaguely the same spot. I'll press the uh, button, wait till that goes to C2, which does take a second by the looks. All right, we've now got C2 on the screen so we can take the curvet out. We can add in 12 drops of reagent C. One thing I will say is the checker vial or curvet now is incredibly full with all of these drops. I'm gonna tip it up five times. I'll give it a little wipe just to make sure there's no fingerprints on there. Pop him back into our checker, hold the button down and we should get a 15 minute countdown. I'll let the time run for a little while and then we'll see what the result is. All right, we're entering the final seconds of the countdown for the checker. I am curious because uh, this Dr. Tim's ammonium chloride solution says add four drops per gallon to raise to a concentration of two milligrams a liter. So um, it'll be interesting to see. I added two drops to 10 milliliters. We'll see what that equates to. Three, two, one. Should be fairly high. And we get 1.41, which is probably not as high as I was expecting from two drops of the ammonium chloride into, uh, into 10 milliliters. We should have got considerably higher than that, I'd imagine. Um, I, was expecting, I was expecting well more than two ppm, but uh, we got 1.4 ppm. The accuracy of that, I cannot really comment on because um, ammonia is not something I test all that often. And uh, this bottle of ammonium chloride has been sitting around for a year and a half since I cycled my tank. So I don't know, I guess it gave us a result, which is really what I was looking for, how accurate it is. I couldn't comment. Maybe it's time to jump onto the magnesium because I do have a good range of test kits to compare the results of that on. Just before I do, check out the color of the result. That is a vibrant green, almost the same color as my screwdriver here. So um, maybe you could use that as a standard. All right, and just to test the theory that uh, my main tank actually does have no ammonia in it without the additional drops from Dr. Tim, I thought I'd run an extra test. Let's see what the uh, ammonia checker comes up with. Fingers crossed for zero. We've got 0 0.05, which is probably within spec. Maybe one of my fish has just passed a bit of waste, but um, I'm happy with that. I think it's time to move on to the magnesium checker. All right, onto our magnesium checker. Let's see what we get. Again, it's the fairly standard uh, large form factor that uh, they seem to come in these days. The magnesium checker itself is this black slash slate color. You get a battery to pop in it, which we'll do in a second. We get a huge bottle of reagent A. This guy is 106 milliliters, very precise amount. We get a smaller bottle of reagent B. This is, uh, I'm gonna say it's probably about 30 milliliters, 27 milliliters, again, very precise. We get a couple of curvettes. We get a bunch of syringes. We get a few of these five milliliter syringes, one with blue lines, one with black lines. We get your uh, fairly traditional one milliliter syringe and we get a bunch of tips for them. And of course, the much important uh, instructions, both in the quick and the uh, long detailed version. So let's jump into a test. First of all, I've got to get this battery in this thing, which um, I know you guys probably laugh at watching me do because uh, I really seem to struggle getting these bottom plates off, which um, I don't know if it's just me or if everyone else does too, but they're just so awkward. There's just no way to lift this up. You gotta sort of pry it on an angle like you're gonna break it. And I hate that, particularly with a brand new checker you've just taken out of the box. I don't want to feel like I'm about to break it. Oh, that feels horrible. All right, drop the battery in again, flat side down, positive side up. You make sure you get those little connector pins in, push that down. You can hold it while you pop the screw in. All right, that guy is ready to go. Now, before we go any quicker, let's have a, any further, let's have a quick look at the instructions. It says to turn it on, get C1. We get four milliliters of reagent A. Then we get uh, five milliliters of tank water. Tip it upside down five times. Then you, oh, you put it in, press C2, we get one milliliter of reagent B. Tip it upside down five times, press the, uh, put the checker back in, press the button and you should then get your results. So let's see how we go. First of all, turn it on, get our checker. Let's add four milliliters. Make sure I'm using the correct colored syringe. 
All right, so it says to use the black syringe with a tip on it. We need four milliliters of this. So uh, let's go about getting that. It does come all nicely sealed up. That being said, the seal is difficult to break and it didn't break at all. <laughs> We'll come back to four milliliters and uh, pour that in. Sit that aside with the tip in it. Might have to try and fish that out later. I'm sure that's not the way it's meant to work. Now we've got to get um, five milliliters of tank water, which we use the blue syringe for. Let me do that now. Okay, I've got five milliliters of uh, tank water. You go to the bottom of the syringe, should line up with a five milliliter line. Pour that in. All right, now we've got to pop our cap back on, tip it up and down five times, two, three, four, five. Sweet, we can go over to the second side of the instructions. Now I'll give this a quick clean with my jumper like all the uh, good lads do. Pop that into our checker. I do actually normally like to try and line up the uh, 10 milliliter indication with the front of the unit. Press the button, it should flash for a second and then go to C2. And it'll get there. All right, we got C2. Having equally as much trouble opening the seal on uh, the second reagent, but that's okay. We'll take the curvette out, open the cap. Let's get one milliliter of this reagent. I'm not gonna use the tip because I lost the last one in there. All right, right to the bottom of the syringe. This is a bright colored reagent. Check out that fanciness, all right. I'm gonna put the cap back on my reagent because uh, Hannah's are known to potentially go off with the exposure of air. All right, we're gonna tip him up five times. Three, four, five. Give it a little wipe on the uh, jumper. We've got this funky purple color. Pop him back into our checker. Press our button. Let's see what we get. Wow, okay. It has come back incredibly high at uh, 1760. That does seem to uh, replicate what uh, others are saying online. I know my magnesium based off both ICP results, daily Mastertronic tests and occasional manual tests that my magnesium is currently around the 1360, 1380 mark, which means this is reading, according to those tests, about three to 400 ppm high. And uh, you can see I'm near the maximum of this unit, which does top out at 1800. So um, I'll let you make your own opinions on based off of that. All right, just for fun, I thought I'd grab some reference solution. This is a 1310 ppm reference solution. I'm curious to see if we can get some uh, repeatable results to see just if the Hannah Checker is reading high or if all of my other test kits are out. So um, I agree, this is probably not the most scientific solution, but um, I'm gonna do another test with this and just give us a bit more data to compare with. So um, I might speed the footage up so you don't have to go through the whole process again, but uh, let me get stuck into it. All right, moment of truth. We have the calibration sealed at 1310 ppm and uh, we're reading over 1800 on the uh, Hannah Checker Magnesium. So I'm not sure if uh, there's something wrong with the unit or something wrong with my process. I feel like I'm following the instructions fairly closely, or it could even be something wrong with my reference solution and all of my other test kits, but um, I'm not gonna make the conclusions. I'll give you guys the information and you can make your own conclusions from there. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my personal overview of each of the two brand new HANA checkers out, the, both the magnesium and the ammonia. I'll let you decide whether they're useful for your application or not. I know they'll suit some circumstances and possibly not some other circumstances, but you don't need some YouTube influencer telling you whether they're gonna work for you or not. Have a look at the information at hand and decide for yourself. If you've got any questions, comments, or feedback about the uh, channel, my tank, or of course the checkers, feel free to hit me up in the comment section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment so it is the best way to get hold of me other than that guys if you enjoyed the video and you're keeping up with the content feel free to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing in that button in the bottom left hand corner or right hand corner always confuses me <laughs> other than that guys till next time stay safe keep roofing cheers bye